welcome. Something different today. How many times have you seen me play an acoustic on my YouTube channel? Probably not very many, um, but this song really beckoned for a Dreadnought guitar. I'll quickly tell you about this guitar. I bought it last year, uh, almost a year ago today actually, uh, working at a guitar shop. I was playing one of these. Probably really didn't have the money at the time because we had bigger and better plans, uh, but I fell in love with it, had to have it. It's a Guild Dreadnought. Great guitar. There's no affiliate links or anything going on. I really should organize that, but I haven't. Um, that, that would be a cool thing, but no, it's just a cool guitar, as you can probably hear. Sounds great, feels great, great quality, and these are old strings too. They haven't been changed since I bought it, so that's what you're hearing, this Guild Dreadnought. Really cool. Now, the song we're doing today, uh, it's a Jimmy Rogers uh tune it's the intro to a jimmy rogers tune mule skinner blues the cramps covered it so it's quite connected with everything that goes on on this channel in terms of the psychobilly and the rockabilly uh so yeah i thought i'd do something a little bit different and walk you through this uh the intro to this song uses the chords d a7 uh and there's a b7 there's an e7 and an a7 slash c sharp i guess you could say and then we're using the d a7 and the D. That's the simple layout, but of course there's some really cool stuff going on uh, in there. I realize my wallet's in my pocket. I normally take it out for the videos so it doesn't look like something's growing in my leg. You keep your cheeky comments to yourself, all you. So um, here we go. Uh, what happens here, we're going open fifth string, second, fourth fret, Fourth string open, so O two four O. We make a D chord, we strum. We hit the fifth string, open, and then we strum. When I say strum, you're actually strumming the third string, second string, and first string. By the way, tabs for this available on my Patreon for members only. Um, but given you can be a member from two dollars, it's a pretty cheap ask, and there's tons of material on there. It's growing every day. There's a Discord. Check it out. I'll keep moving along. So that's what we've got so far. Now we're going to the A7, but this is a really cool way of playing it. So you're going to bar your finger across the 2nd fret on the 4th string, 3rd string, and the 2nd string there. Put your 3rd finger on the 3rd fret, or you could use your 2nd finger if you prefer, on the 1st string there, okay? So we get bar, now you strum from the 3rd string down, and then we get this lick. O, two, three, four, O. That was all on the fifth string till I said the O, which was on the fourth string. Da, 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 da. So what do we got so far? So this is the, the lead in bar, uh, and then basically the first three bars on the transcription here. Whoops, sorry. So we're up to there, and then we do the D thing again. Uh, again, from the third string. Then as we strum down the second time, come up on the fourth string open, play the fourth fret on the fifth string, the third fret, we play the second fret, and now we're on to bar five. And then we hop to the same chord that we did from A, but from the fourth fret, put your finger right across, have your second finger ready there, you're gonna need it, but this time reach to the seven, so we've got four, 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 seven. We strum that twice, and we go back to that second finger there, and that's bar five. So I'll play everything up to bar five. <laughs> Nearly binned it, but that's all right. Got there in the end. Now, damn it, on the transcription it says B7, but this is actually an E7. The tab's correct though. I, I um, Unfortunately, I don't have the original guitar profile of this transcription that I made a while back. It's just a PDF, so I can't even correct that, unfortunately. But that's an E7, guys. So that's, after we do this, first finger on the second fret, third finger on the fourth, second on the third on the second string, pinky there. So it's like a D7, but we've shifted up, shifted up. Okay, so we're going, we pick four, three, second and first together. Then we do this walking line in. And we do the A7 again, but this time with the C sharp in the bottom. Okay. So that's bar five, six, and seven that we just got through, but I'm gonna play everything through there again, so. Jump to there. The E7. 
seven. Walking to the A seven slash C sharp. So boom, boom. Then we do a D, but we play the fourth string, strum the third down, hit the fifth string, strum from the fourth down. So it's the A seven again, and then we just strum a D. You probably pick it and then. Okay. So um, let me just talk quickly about that A seven slash C sharp and some of the really clever little things going on here. I mean, if you want to make an A seven chord, you're going to need the first of the A, the third of an A, which is a C sharp. Okay, whenever we talk about the numbers, they come from the major scale. So if I say three, A, B, C sharp has to be C sharp because that's tone, tone in the major scale layout. Okay, so if you're not sure about that, check out my Theory for Rockabilly playlist. Um, and actually in the very first video, I talk about that in depth, very, very useful stuff. Um, but yeah, we need the first degree, the third degree, and the fifth degree, as well as the flat and seventh degree. Okay, and we call it that because in a major scale we would have used a G sharp. Today in, a, in an A7 chord we use a flat 7, that's going to be the G. So if we take those potential notes, A, C sharp, E and a G, and we play them on a guitar, they end up usually looking something like this. So we've got the A, the E, the A again. Okay, in this case we could often play an A7 like that. We get our G here. And then our C sharp way up there on the second string because if we put that third on the fifth string we cut off our root note our a so we often don't see that but jimmy rogers was clever he uh decided he liked that sound he didn't didn't mind if he lost the root note so we've got instead of a e a c sharp and then this flat seven being up there we now have a c sharp e a c sharp and the g there totally um allowed <laughs> allowed for lack of a better word uh, you know, with these, with all chords, you can really arrange them however you like. Just because you learn, you know, your chords like this or your bar chords, you don't have to play them that way. Um, and that's something that comes from learning jazz and learning theory and, and getting into that stuff. And it's a beautiful thing to take to blues and more contemporary types of music. So if you're playing uh, a pop song or something, um, you've got a lot more chord options. Even if it's just a basic G chord, you could sort of you know, just different ways of playing simple chords without it becoming uh, busy in terms of notes like in jazz, which can happen. And some of you may not have a love for jazz and that might be why, um, but the value of that theory is useful across the board. So I've rambled enough. I just wanted to throw that in there, a little bit of a bonus extra theory lesson discussing that. Um, and yeah, you've got a cool little acoustic blues intro to play now to impress your friends. I could say at Christmas time, but then that will date this video. Hopefully this video will be useful for eons to come. Guys, thanks for watching. Check out the Patreon. There's going to be more stuff coming out in the next week or two. Like, subscri subscribe, learn to talk, Adrian, and comment. It helps. Thanks a lot, guys. Do you want to see more acoustic stuff or you want to see more of the other stuff? Let me know. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. Take it easy and see you in the next video.